Welcome to Singapore as Sail GP opens yet another frontier in Southeast Asia with its eighth event of season three. The city state and its beautiful marina provide a spectacular backdrop to the race course off the southeast coast, just 137 kilometers or 85 miles from the equator. Alongside Lisa Darman and Emily Nagel and Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris. Not good incidents for New Zealand. Collision in the practice, minus four points before we even start racing. How costly is that gonna be here in Singapore? Just 10 seconds to go. We're watching for the line to turn white. It's a slow speed walk to the start line, but still the timing will need to be inch perfect. USA look a touch early to my eye. Oh, they're over early on the US. New Zealand out of the middle of the line look good. This is the umpires, OCS penalty USA. <sighs> over the line early. USA need to drop behind the whole fleet at Mark 1. Disaster for Jimmy and his crew. It was a millimetres away from being perfect. But New Zealand, they've got to hull up. They turn the boat towards Mark 1. They're going to have a fast angle in, but can they roll over the top of Denmark and France before that Mark 1? Remember, it's just four legs. It has been shortened because of the wind conditions. And Emily, if you're New Zealand, you could not have had a better start. Remember, they're trying to make up those four points they've already lost from the practice incident collision with the USA. And then uh, the listening to Pete Burling. Voice of Blair too there. Let the wing flow. They're just desperately trying to encourage the breeze over those wings. Four is the magic number today. Four legs, four person crews. This is the first race we are scheduled for at least one more, and then hopefully the conditions get better for tomorrow on Sunday. A slow pace, but it couldn't be better for the Kiwis. New Zealand wins the first race at the Singapore Sail Grand Prix. We're watching for the line to turn white. It's all about your timing. Spain, Australia, try and dive through late. Here we go. Oh, to start by Tom Slingsby on board Australia. He found a gap. He's dived through at pace. He's going to have the most speed as we head towards Mark 1, and it's going to be a sprint between Australia and Spain from here. Had a little speed in the back here. Far off a popping speed here, Tom. Copy. Just hold on the trims. 30 kilometers an hour, popping speed. That means they think he's fast enough to get up on the foils. 30 kilometers an hour, look at this. Bit of a test of strength here between the United States and Australia. And boy, do the United States need it. As we see the leaderboard showing New Zealand in fourth. That would be some comeback if they could salvage a fourth from this. Here come the United States. What a comeback for Jimmy Spittle and Rome Kirby. He's popped that boat up on the foils. Race number two goes the way of the Americans. Kid comeback, Jimmy Spittle, Rome Kirby, Paul Campbell James, and CJ Perez get it done in the second race in Singapore. Watch for the line to turn white. It's all about timing. Who's going to hit the line fastest? Sneaking in there. To wow, over early. Wow, so tight. And out of the middle of the line, it's going to be France, who need, need a result. And at the bottom of the line, New Zealand. Once again, they had that four-point penalty before racing began. Put themselves back in the game. But De La Pierre, last overnight, needs a result. He's going to lead at Mark 1. Tricky manoeuvres in this light wind. New Zealand stay on the force. Brilliant turn by the French. Bottom speed, 33 kilometres an hour. 50 metre gain in that one manoeuvre for Quentin de la Pierre's French team. And they're going to be set up for gate two. It should be easy for them from here, but are they fast enough to hold off the fast charging Kiwis? So at gate number two, it's New Zealand that takes the lead away from the French and near contact right there as Quentin de la Pierre has to veer away and a great maneuver by Peter Burling and the Kiwis. And here comes the rest of the fleet with Switzerland currently sitting in third. So it's France, Switzerland, Great Britain and New Zealand, the top four. Then it's Denmark, Spain and the USA. This is the first race of three scheduled, but that third one is only for the top three. And there you see the distance between France and Switzerland, just 12.3 meters, and then a big gap back to Great Britain and New Zealand. It is, Todd, but New Zealand are foiling, the French are foiling, but Switzerland weren't. There's more wind as you move away from the shore. This camera angle says that it's really close between Great Britain and New Zealand. Great Britain has the right of way. We've got to keep an eye on this. Has Burling judged it right? He's famous for being aggressive. He's pushing it. He's slow. That's going to go to Craig Mitchell. 
Don't be surprised to see a protest from Great Britain here. And again, New Zealand's going to have to dip behind France. Race number three, the first race of Sunday. This is leg three of five. They will go through gate number three, then head back down the course, and then it'll be a short blast of the finish line. And Great Britain has put themselves in a great position, but France still leads. That's a big turn in the wind. The wind's rotated to the right. We can see Switzerland able to sail nearly straight up the course into second. They'll turn left, and I think they'll be well set for the next leg as France splits the course. What a move by the Swiss. They found the better breeze. They've sailed a shorter distance by getting a good angle. That's the voice of Nathan Outridge, the strategist. Well, wow. pretty good strategist to have at the back of the boat there. Oh, wow, look at this. They are all coming together. Oh, this is going to get tight. He's got to miss him here. Wow! Late decision by the Swiss. That's going to cost him a lot of distance. Misjudgment there. It was tight, but they may still make the left turn. French manoeuvre. New Zealand have somehow passed. The British must have been a good manoeuvre. And here we go. Coming into gate number four at the bottom of the course. There's just one leg left here, Todd and Burling. And two con New Zealand. What a move. New Zealand turns first. That's it. Can Switzerland set? Great manoeuvre by the Swiss boat. Can they stay on the foils? Oh, New Zealand's getting pretty angry there on board Outridge. Now, New Zealand, one more turn for each boat. Right of Bay will be with New Zealand. And here comes Denmark into the picture. It's a ley line and tack around the left mark and that's what wins the race, okay? Keep it fast. Do not get slow. And exactly how Nathan Outridge dialed it up, Switzerland goes into the record book as they pick up their first win in Sail GP and it comes in Singapore. What a finish for Switzerland as they come from the back of the pack to get the win ahead of New Zealand. Denmark comes in third. After three races, it has tightened up considerably. Look for this line to turn white. Denmark could be good here. Who's going to be behind the line? Oh, I oh. think they're over. Oh, he had, oh. had to push it. Had to push it. That's going to be costly. I don't see a way back from here. But Sehested out of the top of the line. He's got the fastest angle to mark one. And look at him go on board Denmark. For Denmark, wow, they look pretty good at the moment. Can Switzerland overtake the Danes and give themselves a shot at the final? And Switzerland is certainly cheering on Great Britain to pass the Kiwis, and that would push them into that third position right now. Swiss talking, that's the strategist talking to Seb Schneider. Nathan Outridge, the strategist. He's cool in the plays, but the Swiss team, they're able to deliver them today. Really good to see, as we see the Danes now foiling away. They look fast on board this Danish boat, and they need to be. And we've got breaking news. The race has been shortened now. It's down to the last gate. Leg five of five is what they are on. And it's going to be Denmark that's going to cross the line as they pick up the win here in race number four to back up the third place they got in race number three. And that will put the Danish team in that final. Switzerland. What a day for the Swiss, Todd. A first and a second. Yep. Not going to be enough to make the final as it stands at the moment with New Zealand coming across the line in third. They look set for an easy third on board New Zealand. What a comeback from Burling. We thought two days ago that four-point right. penalty was just almost a schoolboy error. They've made up for it and then some. So Peter Burling, New Zealand. Tom Slingsby, Australia. And Nikolai Sehested and Denmark. They are on for the final. The course for the final race is seven legs. The axis is one, nine, three. One and two. So Melanie Roberts, the race manager, letting us know there are seven legs, which means there's plenty of wind. That means lots of falling and a wide open track. How's your timing, Peter Burling? At the pole position, watch for the line to turn white. Perfect start by all three boats. Sehested blasts out the middle of the line, but it should be New Zealand hanging on on the inside, although it's going to be an absolute sprint into Mark 1. Can Sehested push hard enough to get over the top? Going to have to set up. Oh, a little bit of a dip. 
going to need to be a turn right at this mark, I imagine, Todd. Watch for the boats to set up. The wind's turned so much, they're going to be able to sail straight down the course. There you go, New Zealand. They read it first. They spin. Possibly lined up for gate two already. 33 kilometres an hour of breeze here. That is more wind than we have ever sailed with, with the 29 metre wings. Normally they max out at 18 kilometres an hour, so a lot of learning going on here as they figure <laughs> out how to depower these wings. A lot of learning at high speed. Look at the wind across the course now bumping over 30 kilometres an hour. It is New Zealand at gate number two, then the Danes and then Australia. Up those, there you go, Slingsby. That was the play. He needed to, oh, they've missed the manoeuvre. They've missed it. Bad, bad manoeuvre on board Australia. That's metres out the window. Perfection from Denmark through the turn. Perfection from New Zealand. And that's going to be costly for Australia. And it's now a sprint up the course. Halfway point in the race here. And that's a big advantage. Look, 100 metres ahead. It was nearly a 70 metre gain on that last leg for New Zealand. That's ominous for the rest of these crews. 77.1 kilometers an hour top speed so far for this race. It's done by the Kiwis. And who would have thought they'd be hitting those speeds on Friday when we were looking at the forecast. And here they are. And look at the distance. Over 250 meters New Zealand way out in front. Like six of seven, one more leg, and the Kiwis will take it all. So despite being down four points to start the regatta, it is New Zealand Sail GP that comes to Singapore and walks away with a victory. Yeah, um, obviously to put it all together today, uh, we thought we were you know, in really good shape yesterday. We've been feeling really good and you know, the last couple of events about to bounce back uh, with the win is just absolutely amazing feeling and yeah, everyone did an amazing job, everyone's been working super hard and uh, I think it just uh, all came together today which is pretty nice. New Zealand moves on to 59 points. The Australians on 68. Great Britain now in third. Just one point clear of France who fall out of the top three. Remember, top three teams want to be there when they get to San Francisco, and that's the fight for the grand final. So they come into the event four points down, and here they are at the end of the day, the end of the weekend, as the champions. Once again, it's the Singapore Sail Grand Prix that goes the way of Peter Burling and New Zealand Sail GP. We'll see you in Australia.